Okay, so um, we'll talk a little bit about, all right, so we're talking about formed elements, right? What are the formed elements? Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. We talked about red blood cells until we were blue in the face, right? We are solid on red blood cells. We're in the middle of white blood cells right now. We talked about all the different kinds of white blood cells. Um, we talked about the functions and how you identify the different kinds and what a differential is. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about white blood cell production, right? How do we produce the white blood cells? Um, and we kind of hit this a little bit, right? Like when we talked about red blood cell production because there's some similarities, but we'll go through it in more specific detail right now. Remember, all of the blood cells, doesn't matter, red, white, platelets, all of them originate as hemocytoblasts, right? So we have hemocytoblasts, and those will divide and differentiate or, or mature to give us two different types of stem cells. We have myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. Myeloid stem cells, remember, give us everything except lymphocytes. So we said that, remember, that's where the red blood cells ended up coming from. Um, so these will give us red blood cells, platelets, and then all of the other white blood cells. So what would it be? Name them for me. Neutrophils. Eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. Okay, so everything except the lymphocytes come from the myeloid stem cells. There's a lot of different divisions, as we'll see in a second. There's intermediaries, everything spreads out, it's complex. But everything comes from the myeloid stem cells, except for lymphocytes. Also, all of those cells are produced, they mature, the whole process happens, in the red bone marrow. Okay, nothing else is needed. That's not the case with some of the lymphocytes. Here on the other side, we have hemocytoblasts, lymphoid stem cells, and then eventually we get to lymphocytes. Okay, so lymphocytes are the only ones that come from the lympho lymphoid stem cells. It's called lymphopoiesis. Now, Lymphocytes are all produced in the red bone marrow. Okay, so the production of all of the lymphocytes starts in the red bone marrow just like everything else. But some, I'll add in here, not all, but we'll say T cells. The T cells do not mature in the red bone marrow. The B cells and NK cells stay in the bone marrow, just like everything else. They, they're made there, they mature there, everything's fine. T cells are weird. Remember, T cells are a specific type of lymphocyte. And I told you that T cell means thymus dependent. So where do you think the T cell matures? In the thymus. Okay, the T cell is gonna be released into the bloodstream. It travels to the thymus, and then the T cells mature in the thymus. We have a really protected environment in there um, with all these like tight junctions. It's like a little safe and the T cells mature in there where they're kept from all antigens. We don't want them to see any antigens, and the reason for that is we test them to make sure they don't react against self cells. Um, if they recognize self cells and, and attack them, then they'll attack our body. So really like two to 4% of T cells actually get used. They're, they're okay, they don't react to us, we let them go and use them in the body. The rest get destroyed and recycled. Um, but all of that, that testing happens in the thymus. We'll talk about it a lot more when we do. Um, did I just check that? Did I do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it when we do the um, lymphatic system. <coughs> all right. So we'll talk a little bit about how we control the production um, of white blood cells. Now, lymphocytes are different. <laughs> lymphocytes are super complicated. Um, again, we'll talk about this more when we talk about immunity, but lymphocytes essentially, it requires some sort of exposure to an antigen. And then there's a ton of intermediaries and chemical messengers that are involved. 
um, in order to make or promote the production of lymphocytes. So that's super, super complicated. The production of all of the other white blood cells is relatively simple. Um, we control it with something called colony stimulating factors or CSFs. Um, we mentioned multi-CSF because multi-CSF also stimulates red blood cells. Um, but we have all different types of colony stimulating factors um, or hormones that stimulate the production of specific white blood cells. And they're named for what they stimulate. So it's pretty easy. Um, M CSF is just monocyte colony stimulating factor. Stimulates the production of monocytes. G CSF is granulocyte colony stimulating factor. So all the granulocytes, right? The fills, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. GM is granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor. Okay, so all of the white blood cells except lymphocytes. Okay, so that would be neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. Multi-CSF is the one that we talked about when we talked about red blood cells. Multi-CSF stimulates every type of blood cell except lymphocytes. So really like if you, it stimulates the myeloid stem cell. So everything that goes down below myeloid stem cell gets stimulated. So that includes um, all of our granulocytes, right? Our eosinophils, neutrophils, and basophils, monocytes, platelets, and red blood cells. Again, if you stimulate the myeloid stem cell, everything below gets stimulated as well. So multi-CSF stimulates all blood cells except for lymphocytes. Um, some of these we've replicated, and we have pharmaceuticals that are synthetic versions of these, and we can use those to stimulate the immune system. Um, Neupogen, N-E-U, I think, P-O-G-E-N. Neupogen is a pharmaceutical. Um, it's an injectable that's a synthetic version of G CSF, granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Um, sometimes we'll give this to patients who are receiving chemo. It's called rescue therapy. So when you're giving a patient chemo, often you have to stop the chemo because their white blood cells drop too low, right? And they're just too prone to infection. You can't keep giving it or the chemo will actually kill them. Um, so you have to stop the chemo. We'll give Neupogen rescue therapy so that we can continue chemo. So you give them Neupogen, that stimulates their granulocytes. Um, and remember, neutrophils are most of your white blood cells. So that brings your white blood cell count back up and then you can continue the chemotherapy. Um, <clears throat> so we can, we can replicate these or make these to utilize pharmaceutically. summary pages at the end for your reference, but we already really spoke about this. Um, we can glance at the pictures though. Neutrophils, remember we said, um, have this segmented nucleus, right? So it's like a string of beads. It's super odd shaped. It's got like numerous lobes to it. It's a really weird nucleus. Eosinophils are brick colored. They have these red um, or kind of crimson colored granules. That's how you can identify them. Basophils have very, very dark granules. Again, they're the ones where the granules are actually darker than the nucleus. That's how you can identify them. Um, a granulocytes, monocytes, remember, have like a kidney bean shaped nucleus. And then lymphocytes, the nucleus takes up pretty much the entire cell. Guys, it's seriously time. Okay, give me two seconds on this slide. Um, this is just the production of the formed elements. Everything in red are the things that I think are important for you to understand. Again, remember hemocytoblasts um, give us the two types of stem cells, myeloid and lymphoid. Lymphoid stem cells give us lymphocytes. Myeloid stem cells give us everything else. Right? So we looked at red blood cell production before. Um, platelets we'll look at next class. Here you see the granulocytes and then the monocytes. The only other thing I wanted you to see is the blasts. Notice in here that we have blasts, right? Like lymphoblasts eventually become lymphocytes. Monoblasts eventually become monocytes. Myeloblasts become the granulocytes. Uh, erythroblasts become red blood cells. 
Remember I told you blast is like a baby cell, right? It's an immature cell. The reason this matters with blood cells is that we check for blasts when we do a differential. You should not see a bunch of blasts in your blood. These blasts are not mature. They should be in the bone marrow. If you see a ton of blasts in the blood, you probably have some sort of leukemia going on because these are dividing so rapidly that you don't have time or space for them to mature and you're just shooting the blasts out of the bloodstream. So they're not effective um, and they just, they shouldn't be there. They should be maturing the bone marrow. So that's kind of a clue that you might have some sort of a leukemia going on if you ever really had blast count. All right, we'll do the blood clotting next class.